Hallelujah. Oh, we can't do all things, Israel. Yeah. Through Yahshua HaMashiach that gives us strength. How do we get the strength of Yah, Yisrael? How is it that we have come this far? It's only by the Ahava, the love of Almighty Yahweh. Is it important, Yisrael, that we have love? That we have Ahava, one unto another? Without the Ahava of Yahweh, if we do recall, one of the pillars that I talked about was the Ahava. We as Yisrael, we cannot stand. Hallelujah. We do barak you all. They are listening by via of live stream. They have drawn us to that Teshua community on this beautiful Shabbaton of Almighty Yahweh. We do pray for all those that have ailments in their bodies, Israel. For we all are one, are we not? Even though we're individual, we're all in one body, the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. And when there is one that is weak, one that is pain amongst us, we all feel the blunt. We all feel that Yisrael. So we pray that the, al the almighty hands of Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, will touch all Yisrael on this beautiful day. Hallelujah. How are we feeling today, Yisrael? Are we excited about what Yahweh is doing? Hallelujah. Are we excited about having breath in our being this morning? Hallelujah. For it was not by our own power, it was not by our own strength that we could take even one breath. Hallelujah. But it's by the ordination of Almighty Yahweh, and it's by His Torah, His Mitzvah, His Code, it's by His love, Yisrael. We must have a Hava. Torah commands us to have a Hava one unto another. And without the Ahava, the love, Yisrael, we cannot stand as a people. Love has been defined every way, but the way Torah defines love. We have been taught it's always this emotional good feeling to the flesh. And it's always something that's tingling, Yisrael, which that is a part of it. That is a part of love. But the Ahava of Almighty Yahweh it roots much deeper than that. It's even rooted in our pains and our suffering. There is the Ahava of Yahweh. Through hard times, through doubts, through tribulations, there is the Ahava of Almighty Yahweh. It's what sustains us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So what do we have to offer unto Yah? He's given his best. He's given all. He's given coal. He's given Yahshua HaMashiach. Then what, Yisrael? What are we giving to him? Are we giving back unto Almighty Yahweh, the Ahava he has given us? What do we give unto each other? We say with our mouths that we love one another. Even by works and deeds, do we not try to prove that we care, that we are by one another? What is truly in the love of Yisrael? Hallelujah. Are we willing to step beyond the bounds of what we say and what we do to show the Ahava of Yah? Hallelujah. That's what I want to discuss or talk about today, Israel. Ahava, a love. In the Hebrew, one essence of that, Israel, is hain or sheen. It is basically what we feel emotionally, Israel, as love. One to another. From a, a, a hope to one spouse, an aunt, a husband, a wife, physically, emotionally, Yisrael, an important factor. What do we feel for Almighty Yahweh? Is our love of, the, of that kind of essence that emotionally, physically, as we enter into the body of Almighty Yahweh, there's a joy, there is a presence that we want to draw even closer. Don't you want to be close to your spouse? Hallelujah. Many times it's not sex that does it, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That doesn't work all the time. That only lasts for a season. What we're looking for is something more intimate. Something more than just the outer feelings, Yisrael. We want Resolution. We want an assurance that this one, that I, can give my life. Hallelujah. For this one, for this person, for this op, for this a hope. That shows the pure essence of a harbor. Did not Yahshua 
give up his life. He came down from the Shemaims. He was comfortable there. He could have abound there. But yet there was a work that he had to do. What drove him to do that work, Yisrael? It was the Ahava. It was his love. It was the love of Almighty Yahweh given from his bosom that he even spoke things to existence, Yisrael. He says, I'm going to do this for this people because I have this people. I have chosen this people from the beginning to be above all nations, all people. So I'm going to send my totality or the essence of who I am, my co. I'm going to send my voice. And that voice is in Yahshua, Hamashiach. Aren't you glad today, Israel? For without the Torah of Yahweh, suffer ridicule. Did not Yahshua suffer ridicule? Mocking. Was not his body bruised and beaten for our iniquities, Yisrael? That's another fact that we must understand about love, about Ahava. It is a responsibility. It is one being given over as an oath, if I may say, that I'm going to do what it takes to abide in the mishvah, to abide in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. That's the kind of love we must have. It must be a responsibility unto Almighty Yahweh, but also one unto another, Yisrael, as being the body of Yisrael. No, not to your sister physically, not to your brother, brother physically, or your blood brother physically, but because we are all of one ruah. And we have all been washed in the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. So that makes us one. That makes us a family. So what are we willing to give up for one another? Are we willing to give our hand? Are we willing to give our arm, our feet, Yisrael? Are we willing to labor for the welfare of one another, Yisrael? It should be the Ahava. It should be the Torah, the Mitzvah of Yahweh, his love, his call, his voice, his word that drives us all, Yisrael. Yeah. What happened to Cain and Abel in the beginning? Did not Cain slew or kill, murder his brother? Then when Yahweh asked of him, of an account of his brother, what did he say? Am I my brother's keeper? I'm supposed to look over that little runt, that weakly. Yes, we are one another's keeper, Yisrael. What are we willing to give up, Yisrael? Are we going to be as Cain? Or do we slay one another? Do we shed innocent blood, Yisrael? Yeah. Hallelujah. Or are we a people that are willing to bear the blunt, willing to carry the weight? There's one thing that I have always desired to do, Yisrael, whether it's working with the ark, whether it's my little labors here at Teshua, my time with Almighty Yahweh, I want to do what it takes to make it easier on my op, on my hope. I know many times, I'm going to be honest, I have failed at that. But it does not show my desire, Yisrael. Are we willing to pick up a little extra weight so that the next op or hope may have an easier path? Are we willing to take up the slack or are we sluggers? That we take advantage of the time. That we take advantage of what the essence that Yahweh has given us every breath. The movement of our limbs. Do we keep that to ourselves? Are we selfish? Or are we will willing to lend a helping hand, Yisrael? No matter what the circumstance, no matter what time of day, that's, that should not be an issue with us. No matter how hard the work may seem, no matter how treacherous the journey, no matter the aches or the pains, that we may inflict upon ourselves. But we must be a people that have the Sahaba that we're willing to take up. Hallelujah. The cross, if I may say, of one another, this state, Israel. Because there is one for every one of us. Was there not one that was chosen to help Yahshua HaMashiach bear the load, Israel? Why is it so hard for us to bear the load of one another? Come on. Search your own left this morning, Israel. Are we willing to take the extra step? If our art require us to take a step, why don't we take two steps? If our hope desire us to take two or three steps, why don't you just take an extra step, Israel? Whether it's cleaning, whether it's working, this can be applied to everyday living, Israel. Hallelujah. Aren't we approach, approaching Pesach, Israel? You know, I've heard this statement, and I've witnessed this statement, that we need to get our lives right for Pesach. 
our hearts right for Peshach towards one another in the harbor of Almighty Yahweh, which we should. It's a time of searching. It's a time of preparation. But Peshach is just more than just one time a year, Yisrael. Every day is a Peshach. Every day we should search our lives deeply for the things that lie within us that cause us to fall short. Short words, I can't hear, Ramia. Short in the Torah. Short to my eye. Short to my hope. Every breath should be a paycheck unto Almighty Yahweh. He gives us time and seasons as a memorial. But shouldn't this memorial be more than just an act? It should be a day of life. It should be a quality of life, Israel. Hallelujah. So let us pull up. Let us have our one another. Let us love one another. Let us be responsible and caring to one another, Israel. More than just word. More than just say, I love you. It's more than just buying somebody or giving somebody something. The world does that all the time. But are you willing to take responsibility for the actions of one another? Are you willing to suffer the shame and the agony as Yahshua HaMashiach? Was he not our example? Should we not walk in all of his ways? Did he do all to please the Abba? So must we, Israel. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Ahava tonight, one or two another. It's also expressed as Ahab, Ahaba, Ahaba Yisrael. It includes your affection, one or two another. Well, what is affection? It's how you feel. It's, it's, it's really hard to explain by mere words, but is it Yahweh Ahava? It's not in love? Yes, right, yeah. We understand what Torah says about Almighty Yahweh. Even the experiences in our lives. Did not he say, I will never leave you? I will never forsake you? Yeah. Yahshua, he said that he would send a comforter. Yeah. That's a part of a hava. Yeah. That we're able to comfort one another. Yeah. We're able to encourage one another. Yeah. To what? Press on in this battle. Yeah. To move on in the direct, in the way of Almighty Yahweh. Yahshua, does not the Torah encourage us every day? Isn't there times where you, you feel low. Maybe there's some doubt there. But it only takes one scripture, one mitzvah to bring you strength. And when that one scripture comes, all of a sudden there's another one that follows. That give you a little more strength. That's the hive of Almighty Yahweh, whether you realize that or not. That the Ruach can bring the Torah to our remembrance to give us strength, Yisrael. If Yahshua would have left and did not send the comforter, did not leave us a Torah, this misfire that is written in our hearts, Yisrael, we will not be here today. But it's only by the mercies of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us turn. Turn with me, if you have this, Yisrael, to Enoch. I want to begin. Enoch 108, verse 1. I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. It says here that another book of Enoch, which he wrote for his son, Methuselah, and for those that will come after him, observing the Torah in the last days. Have we not come after Methuselah? Israel, are we not in the young Akaris in the last days? What are we observing? Are we observing the faults in one another? Are we observing what we can gain over one another? Or are we observing the Ahava of Yahweh in the Torah? Is that not what it says in Hanak? Observing the Torah in the last days. Israel. Yeah. Verse 2. Who have observed the Torah shall wait patiently. Wait a minute. What kind of patience do we have, Israel? Yeah? Understanding that we're in the last days. Understanding the mishvah, the Torah, the commandments of Yahweh. Did it not command that we ahava one another? Did Cain ahava? Did, did he ahava Abel, Israel? Did he love him? No. I'm pretty sure they had times and moments as being just brothers. But then when it came to offering of the offering of Almighty Yahweh, we find this hate rising up. Do we find hate rising up or distaste when we see one another a hovering Yahweh, lifting up our voices before Abba Yahweh? 
It should not be amongst the house. Is it amongst the house? Sure it is. You can be a hypocrite if you want to, Israel. But there are those that despise. We despise one another because we see something in one that we feel that we don't have. We see a strength in one that we desire, but yet we don't want to take the steps it takes to get to that place. That was Cain's problem. He was jealous of Abel. Why? Because he was Abel. Hallelujah. We should all be able in here, Israel. There should not be any cans or I can or I don't want to do. We should all be willing. Hallelujah. And obedient. And observing and waiting patiently on the Torah. And all the days until the time of those who work evil and is complete. Have we, don't we observe when we see the evilness of this nation? But yet it's not yet complete, Israel. The, as the saying or the phrase go, you ain't seen nothing yet. We think we have seen the wickedness of this nation, but we haven't seen nothing yet. So it haven't come to its completeness yet. Who works evil is complete, and the power of the wicked ones is ended. Verse 3. As for you, he is speaking to Israel. He's not speaking to the world. He's not speaking to the unbeliever, but those that stand in the Torah, the misfire of Almighty Yahweh. As for you, he said, wait patiently. Do you know that's a, that's a, a strength in a hava. We must be patient one with another, Israel. We can't always be short-tempered, so quick to snap or quick to break. He said, wait patiently until what? Until the sin passes away. For the names of the sinners shall be blotted out from the book of life, from the high of life. And the book of Yahweh, the Kadosh one of Israel. It said that Zerah shall be destroyed forever, and their ruach or their spirits or their breath shall perish and die. They shall cry and lament in a place that is an invisible wilderness. Do we find ourselves in an invisible wilderness? We feel we trap, we feel like we're trapped and there's no way out, but yet we cannot see the obstacles, Israel, that are surrounding us. It's like running through the woods with your eyes closed or in the darkness of night. There's all kind of terrors. There's all kind of mishaps, accidents that can happen. You could trip, you could fall, you could run in the tree. That's what it's like being in this old land, in this world, without having the Hava, without having the love of Almighty Yahweh, without having the Ruach HaKodesh. It's like being in a wilderness place with no visual. You cannot see Israel. I told you for his Torah. I told you for his ruah. Hallelujah. That leads and guides us into all, all of his truth. It says, they perish and they die. They shall cry and lament in the place that is like an invisible wilderness and a burning fire. Can you imagine that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What are not in the fiery furnace? Israel. Can you imagine being in the fire of a trial or a temptation and there's no light? You sense the burning, you sense the heat at your heels, but there's no way out, Israel. That is what the trials of this life is, is like. But just as we've seen in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, was not Yahshua, he was even there with him, was he not, Israel? Don't you know that Yahshua, he's with us? Even in the fire, even in the darkness of the trials, or the fiery darts of the enemy, Yahshua Hamashiach is with us, Israel. His Ahava is with us. He shows his love. Why? Because he's with us. He said he would never leave us. I believe that today, Israel. Even though many times we have fallen short, we have left our spouse, we have left him. Yet we have, we are, our names are written in his love, Israel. Hallelujah. He will never forsake us. He will never leave us, Israel. Hallelujah. Even in the wilderness. Did he leave Israel in the wilderness? Did they know where they were going when they left Mizraim? No, they did not. That's why it was important that they had a cloud by day that led them to Israel. And yet he had the fire of the light by night. It says, for there exists ground there as upon the earth. Verse 4. And also, 
There's something like an invisible cloud. Did I not just talk about the cloud? Do we not, have we not heard that in past weeks, Israel, concerning the cloud that led Israel? And though I could see that it was completely dark, and yet I could not see the flame of the fire because it was burning brightly. And there were some things like bright mountains which formed a ring around it and which were tossing into and fro. Verse 5. And then I asked one of the coldest, Malak, who was with me, and I said to him, what is this bright thing? For it is not a Shemayim or heaven, but merely a flame of fire that is burning. What do we have burning within us, Israel? Is this Hahaba of Almighty Yahweh, is it burning? This flame of fire? Do we understand what Yahweh is doing, Israel, as he's pours out his Ahava amongst Israel. And it says this, and a voice of weeping, crying, and lamenting, as well as strong pains, Israel. What is that, Zakin Yeramia? This is talking about hell, or the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. You know, I'm a young man, and I have not experienced the world as many of you may have experienced the world. But yet, as I see from these eyes, it's hell out there. There's hell all around us. That's all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. That's all they have to offer you. But yet, all it is is just pure hell, Israel. It's pure hell. And pain, weeping, and lamenting, and crying. That's what this world is full of. Hallelujah. Verse 6. And he said unto me, This place which you see into, it shall be taken of the spirits of the Ruah, of the life of the sinners, of the blasphemers, those who do evil, and those who offer all things. I'm sorry. And those who do evil, and those who alter. All things what Yahweh has done. That's what hell is meant for. That's why the world is such an array. Now, Yisrael. Because the world, they try to alter what the Torah says. They try to alter what Yahweh commands. Anytime we as a people and as a nation, Yisrael, and I'm speaking to the house of Yisrael, try to alter what Yahweh commands us. His Ahava, they have Ahava one to another, to walk in his misfire and his commandments. Hallelujah. For in this, it says that the Olam of the world will know that we are the disciplined ones. We are the followers of Yahshua HaMashiach. But if we do evil, if we blaspheme the Torah, if we try to change the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, then we will find this hell, if I may use that expression, in our lives. Hell. We will catch pure hell. Hallelujah. He said... Those who do evil, those who alter all things what Yahweh has done through the mouths of his Nabi, through his prophets. All of which do, all of which have to be fulfilled. Verse 7. For some of these things that are written and sealed above in the Shemayams, so that the Melachim may read them, the things that are written, and know that which is about to befall the sinners. The spirits of the ones who do error. Do we find ourselves error, Israel? Yeah. There's a judgment for us if we error or we try to change the Torah or the Mishvah of Yahweh. As well as those who defiled their own bodies. Do we defile our bodies, Israel? Yeah. Have we touched other forbidden things that Yahweh has forbid us not to partake of? Did not Adam and Eve partake of the, the forbidden fruit in the garden, Israel? Yeah. What did happen? They received the just recompense of their reward. They received the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. And they was put out of the garden. It says on, it says, revenge themselves on Almighty Yahweh. Have this distaste before Almighty Yahweh or towards Yahweh. And work together with evil people. 
Those who ahava, it says in verse 8, those who ahava Yahweh have love neither gold nor silver. What do we love, Yisrael? Do we love gold? Do we love the silver of the world? Do we love the currency of which can possess or we're able to buy things in the world, Yisrael? It says that those who are having Yahweh, they have loved neither gold nor silver, nor all the goods, it says, the good things which are in the world. Do we find ourselves loving the things that are in the world, Yisrael? The things that are, quote, good, unquote. The things that the world say are good. They said money is good. A large home is good. Having two or three cars and a garage, it's good. And what they say is good. But it's not the tub. It's not what Yahweh says is tub, Yisrael. Not all the things which are in the world, but have given over, it says, their bodies unto suffering. That is a hava for Almighty Yahweh. That we are willing to give our bodies unto suffering. We're more willing to give our bodies over to food, aren't we not, Yisrael? We're willing to give ourselves over to good times, partying and drinking, having a good time, playing around. But what about the suffering? That's the true essence of the hava of Yahweh, that we're willing to give these bodies over to suffering. That we're willing to Take pains into our own bodies. Not just the pains that we have flipped in ourselves or what we have done to ourselves, but what about our ark and our hope? Are we willing to take, take on those pains? Hallelujah. There are in a hole out there that are in pains, Yisrael, right that are hurting physically, mentally. That if it was it for the mercy of Almighty Yahweh, they would give up today, Israel. That is why it's so important for us to carry on these burdens. Well, how do we carry on these burdens, Zakan Yeramiah? Through prayer. Where's the prayer, Israel? Where's the seeking of Yahweh upon our knees? Praying for one another. We're able to call out a few names. But what about those we do not know of? Are they not also the body? Yisraya? So why can't we send out a pure palah of prayer unto Almighty Yahweh for the house of Yisraya? Do we do that? Are we doing that? Are we showing Ahava to Yisraya? So it's easy to pray for my ark I see every day. It's easy to pray for the ark that we see maybe one, two times a year. We, we somewhat have a relation with them, but what about those we do not know? That we have not seen Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you willing to take on their sufferings? Verse 9. Who from the time of their very being have not longed after earthly food. What is earthly food? Is it the things that we put in our mouths? Is that what he's talking about here? Or is it deeper than that? It's much deeper than that, Yisrael. It's, it's the things that we so-called, or the world so-called, fulfills them, or make them something, or make them feel like somebody. The only thing that makes me feel like somebody is the misfire of Almighty Yahweh. The only thing that gives me strength to press on for day today is the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. What makes me feel like a individual in Teshua or upon Israel is a garment of Sadiq, the righteousness of Yahshua. Because all my righteousness is filthy rags. It's not worth a hill of beans. It's not worth a fly dropping. Hallelujah. But if I garner or hide or partake of the love of Yahshua HaMashiach in me, Israel, and there's a hope for victory. There's a hope for Yeshua to overcome all things. There's a hope for Yisrael to overcome all things. Hallelujah. We have to be willing to go the extra mile, Yisrael. The world, they do it all the time to attain the things of this life, do they not? Is that what we desire, the things of this life? 
Or are we putting our treasures, or our hopes, and the Shemayans will rust, and mouth cannot corrupt Yisrael? That's what we should be putting our hopes, Yisrael. That's what we should be storing up in the Shemayans. Not the food of the things that are in this life, on this world. And who regarded themselves as a mere passing breath. That's why we are. We're just a mere passing breath. Just a mist. Just a puff, and you, you don't even know where your breath is going. You don't see it. When you breathe it in, you don't see it. Maybe if it's cold enough, you may see a little, little fog there, but that doesn't last long before that disappears. Is that what we consider our lives? And who we should consider this life in the flesh, Israel? Those that regard themselves as a mere passing of breath, and they have observed in this manner. Yahweh having put them through much testing. Are we ready for the much testing? This is just a rehearsal that we're going through now, Yisrael. I remember that old song, my Avad, he would play that over and over. I remember on the records back then. I think who, who was singing that? Was it the Winings? This is just a rehearsal? There was a group that was singing that. This is just a rehearsal. When we get to heaven, we're going to really sing. How many remember that old song? That was an old song. Yeah. We, we, I remember as young, young boys, we just sing that song with all that was in us, Israel. Yeah. But when we get to Shemayans, we're going to really sing. This is, just a, this is just a foretaste. I mean, we, we have the sufferings that we shall experience. We haven't experienced suffering, Israel. Yeah. I know there are things that we have experienced in our life, not to put that to the side. But there's some things that are coming, Israel. Yeah. I mean, some real hardcore stuff. Especially for us that are soft and can't endure much. But what we experience, what we are going to experience is not worthy to be compared to the honor which we shall receive, Israel. When we see Yahshua HaMashiach in Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the love of Almighty Yahweh. That we, go through, we must go through these things, Israel. We must go through trials and tribulations. We can't count this life as being merely more than what it is. It's just a breath, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yahweh having put them through much testing, then he shall, he, then he receive their pure ruach. Don't you desire a pure spirit, Israel? Yeah. A pure ruach before Almighty Yahweh, yeah. that he may receive us. Then he receive their pure ruach or their spirits. So that they should bless his Kodesh name. That's all it's for you, Israel. Yahweh desires us to barak him. Yahweh desires us to bless him, Israel. And we have Ahava. Or we have that Ahava that we say we have. It would not be a hard thing for us to lift up our hands in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. It would not be a hard thing, Israel, for us to lift up our voices in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. It would not be a hard thing, Israel, for us to walk in the simplicity of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. It's an easy thing to raise up our hands, Israel. It's not a hard thing to lift up our voice. We lift up our voices to one another sometimes, do we not? Sometimes I have, to, I have to lift up my voice to my wife. Hallelujah. I have to lift up my voice to my ark. That's not hard to do, is it? Yes, right, yeah. But what about lifting our voices unto Almighty Yahweh? Hallelujah. It should not be a hard thing, Israel. Right, yeah. Look at all that he has done for us. Look at all the love he has poured upon us. This morning, this time, hallelujah. The love of Almighty Yahweh, that he desires us in his bosom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I desire to be in the bosom of my hope. Hallelujah. So much so that I desire to be in the bosom of Yahshua HaMashiach. 
Be closer with him, Israel. We don't know what love is, Israel. Hallelujah. All we have is the Mishpah, the Torah, that expressed to us his love. Hallelujah. And we should be more than willing to obey his commandments. That's how we show Ahava to him. And we obey his commandments. Israel, that we can show Ahava a love one to another. As the Torah expressed it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What kind of love do you have today, Israel? Is it this false thing? Is it what we have been taught in our homes? That you stand up for your brother. You stand up for your sister. You don't let anybody just beat up on them. You go in and you take up for them. It even means yourself getting beat up. Well, we should, it should be that way in the house, Israel. The enemy, he comes in to steal, to kill, to destroy, Israel. But well, we should uphold and uplift one another. We should be willing to fight for one another. You know, a soldier has a duty, a duty to his, his nation, does he not? But a warrior, Israel, his duty is even more than just to his nation, but it's to his fellow warrior. It's to his captain. It's to his prince. It's not Yahshua HaMashiach, the prince of Shalom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And a warrior, he's even willing to give up his life, yeah. to die. Yeah. Are we willing to die out, Israel? Yeah. Is our love for Almighty Yahweh so strong that we're willing to die, to give up our life? Yeah. Hallelujah. To give up this breath. Yeah. You know, that's not a bad trade-off if, if you think about it. This life is only a, a breath. That's all that Yahweh asks, hallelujah, of us, is to give our life and to obey him. But look at all the riches. Look at all the honor. My, that's a privilege to have a place on his right hand. There was those in the time of Yahshua HaMashiach when he walked this earth that asked him, said, man, I want to be on the right hand of the Abba. Even on the left hand, just to be in his presence, Yahshua said, you know what, that's not for me to give. Hallelujah. It's only for my Abba to give. Even at that time, Yahshua, he could not speak of that. But don't you know that there's a place waiting for us? There's a place waiting for you. And all you have to do is just give up this old stuff right here. Give up this old life, Israel. Hallelujah. For the Hava. That's love. Herein is love. Not that we have loved y'all, because we did not know y'all. We still don't know y'all. In the essence of his power. So that is not love. But the love is that he ahavas us. That he given so much unto us. I can't grasp Israel. I don't understand it, but I believe it. Hallelujah. It is, there's more to than just this life. Hallelujah. There's a lot I can be doing in the world. Hallelujah. But what is it worth? What is it for a man to gain the whole world, to have fun, drinking? What is that? Come on, really. In this life, if I possess houses, land, kingdoms, what is it in this life? It is nothing. But Yahweh has given us the kingdom. Hallelujah. Have I not talked about the pillars? How Solomon built his house and how his son, his heir after him, built the house unto Almighty Yahweh. But the house we're going to enter has not been built with hands of man. Hallelujah. Yah has built this house. Hallelujah. Didn't Yahshua say that in my avant kingdom there are many, many mansions? What is a mansion? I don't think we really understand what a mansion is. But in my father kingdom of many mansions. Don't you know that that is the heir to Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. His Ahava towards us. He said, just to do this for a little while, Israel, yeah. and there should be great rewards granted unto you. That's love. Yeah. That's Ahava. Yeah. Hallelujah. That even to secure that unto us, to seal that, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. it took the blood. Oh, Yahshua HaMashiach. He sealed it all, Israel. 
And all we have to do is just walk in this Torah, his misfire. Just have that love to endure this life this for a season and just walk in his misfire. Everything will be all right, Yisrael. Yahweh has planned this thing from the beginning. He has you, your welfare, your welfare in mind, Yisrael. So let us press, hallelujah. Let us press towards the mark of this high calling in Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us go to Beresh. I want to show us a few examples here of people and nation that just pulled together their resources, the little, the much that they had, to come together and accomplish great things. Hallelujah. Don't you want to accomplish great things, Israel? Yeah. If we just have the grain of the imuna, the grain of a mustard seed, that's real small. A mustard seed, you really, it's hard to see. If I were to take a mustard seed, a, a handful of mustard seed and scatter it in here, you're not going to find them. They're going to get down in the carpet. You're not going to find them. But if we have just that kind of imuna, Israel, we'll be able to move mountains. So these little trials of tribulation, this should not be nothing for us. We just blow, just blow that off, Israel. Hallelujah. So we come together as a people, as a whole, and truly love one another, obey the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh, and have a heartfelt compassion one to another. We can accomplish great things, Israel. Bereshath, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. I don't know if you recall, but... Um, when I was talking about the voices of Almighty Yahweh, I made a statement that in Torah, in what we call the lost books, that there was a time in the garden when everything sounded the same. Everything was of one voice. That's Yahweh's desire. That was his plan for the beginning, Israel. Yah. We as a nation, as a people, we should all just have one voice, one eye. What is that one eye? We all see the same vision. We all have the same hopes and the same aspiration. We want to enter into the Melkut of Yahweh, do we not? But not only that, I want my Akimah hope to, to make it in too. So we have to bind together as a family, Israel, have a Ahava one unto another. It says in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, And the whole earth, the Olam, was of one language. It's hard to imagine that now, is that not? Is it not Israel? The whole world, one language. Can you imagine how much smoother things would be? I mean, even when what we call English, there's more than one language. Why? Because there's more than one way to speak it, Israel. And the whole world was of one language and of one speech. Verse 2. And it came to pass. As they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another. What do we say one to another, Israel? Do we cut one another down, or do we build one another up? You know, that's one thing about Ahava. Ahava cuts. Sometimes there's things you have to cut down that it can be built right or built back up. So we are wounded in the house of friends, do we not? So Ahava will cause me, if I even sense or I perceive that my ark is walking in the wrong path, that I'm going to confront my ark. And if it means cut my ark, that's what love does. Does not Yahweh cut us? He breaks us? Does he not break the cedars, Yisrael? Hallelujah. And it came to pass that they joined the fitness, and they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to. Now remember, everyone was speaking in one voice, one speech, one language. So everyone understood what one another was saying, no matter how many thousands of people. Go to. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar, the mud they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower. What do we find ourselves building today, Israel? Are we trying to build our own cities? 
or towers? Are we trying to exalt ourselves above the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Did not Satan said, I'm going, to exalt, I'm going to exalt my throne above the throne of Almighty Yahweh? So he's trying to build his kingdom. Is he not? Is he not building his kingdom here on the earth, Yisrael? It should be our desire to build a kingdom, but only based on the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower. Thus, that the top may reach into the Shemayims, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad among the face of the whole earth. So they was all in one mind, and they was all in one accord. What? To build the city. What? That they may have a name or a representation of who they are as a people. And Yahweh came down to see the city and this tower. So this city and this tower, these people, they put their minds together, the resources together. There was all of one voice, all of one language to build this city. And the Torah talked about this city, if Yahweh would have allowed it, they would have accomplished what was in their lives, Israel. Yeah. What are we accomplishing? What are we trying to accomplish today? Hallelujah. There should be only one aspiration for us to accomplish, and that is to do what the Mishnah commands us. Yeah. That is to continue in the direct in the paths of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. So we as a nation, we should be building, right? We should be constructing. We should be strengthening what? The things that remain in our lives. In the Bible of Almighty Yahweh, that the Torah of Yahweh may be lifted high, Israel. Not ourselves, but the Torah of Yahweh. Not our flesh, but the Torah of Yahweh. So Yahweh had to stop this people, this nation, from building this city or this tower. Because whatever they put their mind to, they will accomplish it. And Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower in verse 5 of chapter 11 of Genesis, which the son of man of Adam built. And Yahweh said, behold, look at this. Even in the sight of Yahweh, it was a sight worth beholding. Look at these people. And Yahweh said, behold, the people is one. Can we say that? Can Yahweh say that about the house of Israel, y'all? Now here's a people that the Torah is not on their mind. Not at this building of, of this, this temple or this high place. But yet there was all in one accord. Progress was being made. They were going to do this thing. Where's the progress in the house of Israel? Yeah. Are we willing to take that extra step? Are we willing to bring our resources, Israel? Yeah. No, we as a people, we're very stingy. We don't want to give. We don't want to give to the storehouse of Almighty Yahweh, that there may be some substance for those that may lack. Hallelujah. Ahava will make you give, Israel. Yeah. Ahava will make you give resources for the storehouse. Hallelujah. Yes, it will. Ahava makes you deny yourself. Deny Yahweh, deny himself. He even denied himself. He sent his Torah to us. A filthy people. So we should consider one another, Israel. Hallelujah. Send an offering. Well, you sound like Rayah Dawid. I, I, I attend to sound like Rayah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been an example. He's been a man of strength. I have seen his life, even from a young man. So should I pattern myself after him? Sure. He's walking in the Torah in the midst of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. We're stingy and a perverted people. We don't want to get. We're stingy when it comes towards Yisra'ya. But when it comes to ourselves, we get what we want, don't we? Hallelujah. Time for us to give unto Yahweh what he do want. Torah says, give unto Yahweh honor, give unto Yahweh strength, give him the honor that is due unto his name, yeah. to worship Yahweh in the beauty of Kodesh. You can't do that without a hava, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 6, and Yahweh said, behold, look at this here. The people, there are one, and they have all one language, Yisrael. Do we have one language, Yisrael? Do we understand one another when we speak? I mean, we hear each other speak, but do we really understand one another, Israel? Come on. Do we really know one another? Hallelujah. 
And they have all one language. And this, they have begun to do, this city, this tower. And now nothing will be restrained from them. Nothing. If we will pull together, Israel, our resources, our hava, that we should have one to another, Israel, there is nothing we can't overcome. There is nothing we can't do. There is no mountain that will be too high that we can, can't scale or overcome. No valley too low, Israel. We can do all things as a body and as a whole. We must have a hava one to another. Because even Yahweh said nothing can stop them. Nothing can stop them. The weather didn't stop them. Hunger didn't stop them. Death didn't stop them. Nothing stopped them. So nothing will be, will, will be strained from them. That, that means that anything that they set their heart to do, that they're going to do. They're going to take it. Land, they can take it. They can do all things. Which they have imagined in their minds. Imagine in their minds, Yisrael Yah. Whether it's a wicked device, Yisrael Yah, anything, no matter what it was, anything that comes to their mind because they was in one accord, they was all in one language, they was going to do it, Yisrael Yah. What are we wanting to do, Yisrael Yah? Are we willing to stand in the midst of Almighty Yahweh? Or are we just here just because we have a place to say there's food to eat, we don't have to really go out there and tour and labor in the world. Things are just easy for us, so we're just hanging out here. Now, it should not be that, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we should be all here a while for the hub of Almighty Yahweh. Nothing which they have imagined to do will be withheld from them. So in verse 7, he says, go to, let us go down. We've got to put a stop to this. Yahweh had to put a stop to it, Yisrael. And there he confounded their language that they may not understand one another's speech. He had to do it. He had to do it. Because the thing that was in their hearts, Yisrael, it was not in the Torah. It was not of the will of Almighty Yahweh. They were seeking what? To build their tower, to build their city above the power or the throne of Almighty Yahweh. So it was not the Ahava Yahweh that was in their heart. But it was the hatred of Satan. That's what was in their heart. Because they did every perverted thing to mock and to disown Almighty Yahweh. So he had to put it into it, Israel. He had to put it into it. So Yahweh, he scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth. And they left out to build the city. So everything stopped. The city was never complete. The tower was never complete. Yahweh had to do that, Israel. But you know that Satan, he's trying to use this same tool amongst the house of Israel. We have to be a people that are wise. That we study the Torah, that we understand the Torah, and that we have the love of Almighty Yahweh, his mishpah, and our love. That as Yahweh intended from the beginning, that we as Israel will all be as one language, one people with one mind, and with one purpose, that we can overcome all things, Israel. Yeah. It's hard when you're by yourself. You can say what you want to. Oh, I don't need nobody. That's a lie from hell. You need Israel. You need Yahshua HaMashiach. Wasn't it not a body? Did it not come in flesh? So it's just flat out arrogant and ignorant and just flat out stupid to say, I don't need nobody. I can do this myself. No, you can't. You can't do it yourself. You need the Torah, you need the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. You need the Ahav of Almighty Yahweh. You need his Ruach HaKadosh. And guess what else you need? We need one another. We need one another, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. We need one another. Could Yahshua HaMashiach accomplish what Yahweh intended him to accomplish without the disciples, Yisrael Yah? He needed them. The people he met along the way, he needed them. The Nabi, he needed them. Because if it had not been for the Torah or the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh, or Yahweh speaking to the Nabi, there would not have been any prophecy even to the, the coming or the essence of Yahshua HaMashiach. So did Yahshua need the Torah? Yes, he did. Does he need you, Yisrael? Believe it or not, he needs us, Yisrael. 
Hallelujah. Why would he put forth all this time and all this energy if he was not looking for a product in the last, in the Yom Akarith Yisrael? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Therefore the name of it was called Babel, because Yahweh did that, the, he confounded the language of the whole earth, and for thence did Yahweh scatter them abroad amongst the whole earth. Yahweh confounded them, Yisrael. Are we confounded in this hour? If you're confounded, Yisrael, it's because Yahweh has confounded you. Why? Because we have not abided in the Torah or the Mishra of Yahweh. He desires the house to be of one language. He desires the Ahava to be the same throughout Yisrael. Why? That we can be people that stand firm, stand upon the Torah, and stand upon the promises of Almighty Yahweh. Isn't that beautiful, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Y'all would give us this beautiful day to be in his by it. Hallelujah. Even if it was raining, it's still a beautiful day. Why? Because he has given us breath, Israel. Hallelujah. Because he has given us breath. Let us move on. Let us backtrack a little to Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Concerning Adam and Eve. Even though they transgressed the misfire of Almighty Yahweh. And I'm using these examples just to show the fervent Israel that we should have one another for one another. Not outside the Torah of misfire of Almighty Yahweh. Because Adam, he had a fervent for Eve, did he not? But he walked outside the misfire, the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. We should have even a stronger fervent for one another, Israel. But not to, not to walk outside the Torah of Yah. Not to disobey the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. But that we may obey his commandments and do it wholeheartedly together. Hallelujah. And to Adam he said, this is after they partook of the fruit. Because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife. How many of us have done that? Hearkened to the voice of our hope. And at times you have hearkened to the voice of your wife even though you knew the right thing to do, but because of the heartfelt emotion that you have, the love that you have, you went another direction. And then something happened. You're like, man, I should not listen to that woman. Come on, Israel. It's, true. it's a true fact. Adam, he was the first one, wasn't he? Did he do it? All right. Well, you can play hypocrite all you want to. Hallelujah. Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you should not eat of it, cursed be the ground. Wow, cursed be the ground? Why? Because his wife convinced him to do that which was totally opposite of what Yahweh commanded. And because of the love he had for her, was that not love? That was still an act of love, Yisrael. It still was. Yeah, in his flesh, it was still an act of love, Yisrael. But he should have loved Yahweh more than he loved her. We should love Yahweh more, Yisrael. If we truly love Yahweh like we should love Yahweh, then we'll love one another like we should love one another. We'll be able to instruct one another. We'll be able to tell our ark or our hope no at the time or when a situation is wrong. Tell them, no, no, that's not right. I, I tell my wife that situations come up, and, and, and our little bayette, no, I tell her. I let her know, no, that's not right. No, that's not the way we do things. That's not what Torah says. If you love your wife, you would do that. You're not a man if you cannot correct your wife when she steps out of her bath. Not that we shouldn't give ear over to what our wife said, because we're one. Hallelujah. Don't you think, don't you know that Yahshua, Yahweh, he hears? Yisrael, Yah. Didn't I hear the cries of Yisrael, Yah? And Mizraim? Did he just stay where he was at and just let Mizraim suffer and cry? No, but he came down. Hallelujah. So we should have that same affection. Our ears should be open to our wives. Our, our ears should be open to one another. A hope, your ears and your heart should be open to one another. Not in our own groups, not in our own cliques, what you call cliques or, or whatever. Bust that all up. 
You got your own cliques, your own groups, then you're not in the oneness of Almighty Yahweh. Yahweh desires us to be a one mind, one voice, hallelujah, with all one purpose. If you truly have the Hava of Yahweh in your lap, then your hope will be just one group. Uh, we will just be one group, a team. There's no football game, there's, there's no football, there's no baseball game that is played. If the team is not in one accord, there's no hope for any victories. Even if the team is in one accord and they play, you're going to lose some, but you're going to win some. Hallelujah. So let us be winners, Israel. Let us join together. Be a one mind, be a one voice. If you have the Ahava of Yahweh, you will be one. You'll be one, all of one voice. Yahweh desired it for the beginning, Israel, for us to be of one voice, one mind, speaking the same thing. So Yahweh, he cursed the ground, and he said, for your sake, in sorrow you shall eat of it in all the days of your life. See, every time Adam, he would go to plant a seed, there was briars and thistles to yield forth. Why? As a reminder, it was for his own tub. Yahweh allows things to pop up in our lives, Yisrael, Yah, for our own tub, Yisrael, Yah. Why? Because we have transgressed the mishpah of Yahweh. So he reminds us. Not only that, Satan, he comes and try to buffet us. He helps remind us too, also. But we must stay in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 18. Thorns and thistles shall they bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of your face, is it not true today, Israel, shall you eat bread till you return from the ground? For out of the ground were you taken, and from the dust you are, so to the dust shall you return. Verse 20. And Adam, he called his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Verse 21. Unto Adam and his wife did Yahweh make coats of skins and clothe them. Aren't you glad for that, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. That Yahweh has clothed us yeah. with the coat of his Sadiq, yeah. with the coat of his righteousness. Even though we have committed the sins that we have committed, Israel, it is all covered. Hallelujah. Not only has he covered it by the blood, but he has covered it with the cloak of Sadiq, the cloak of righteousness. Verse 22. And Yahweh said, Behold, Adam has become like one of us. And now knowing between Tob and Ra. And now let us put forth, let us put forth his hand. And take also, before he takes also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So even Yahweh at this time. He had to put a stop to Adam. Why? Because y'all have, y'all have placed a rather large amount of knowledge and wisdom into Adam, believe it or not, Yisrael. Yeah. So he had to take him out of the garden. Did he not have to stop the Tower of Babel from being built? Yeah. Why? Because there was all of one mind. Adam and Eve, there was all of the same mind, Yisrael. Yeah. So what did Yahweh have to do? He had to move them out. Why? Because the next thing he would have done is partaken of the tree of life. And it was not at that time that he should take of the tree of life, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. We should walk in the tour in the midst of Yahweh. There's no other way to walk that we may have the high of life. That's why it's important that we endure the things that we endure, that we go through the trials that we go through, that those things pop up in our lives, just uproot them. We have pigweeds in our gardens many times. Many times, and you know, you have to go pull, pull them things out. You get print, you get poked, but it must go. Why? Because if you allow that root to stay there, it's going to make more, Yisrael. Yeah. It's going to make more. So it's important that we purge these things, these sins out of our lives, that we walk in the midst of Almighty Yahweh. And when you go to pull up that thing, you're going to get pricked. It may hurt, Yisrael, yeah, but it's for the better tub. Why? Because this same tree that Yahweh moved Adam from out of the midst of, we have a right to that tree at the end of all things if we stand, if we walk in the Torah. Hallelujah. That's another beautiful thing I want to bring out in the end of this message. Not this message, but um, concerning the pillars or the voices of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. He still desired Adam, man, us, his elect to eat of that tree in the last days, Israel. Hallelujah. It's not Yahshua the tree of life. 
Can we partake of that tree of life even on this day, Israel? Let us partake of the fruits, Israel, of the tree of life. Even out of this message I speak, Israel. There's nibbits, there's pieces of truth, there's fruit that you can partake of. Partake of. It's for our strength. Hallelujah. That we stand as a house. That we stand together, whether through th thick or thin. Hallelujah. We stand as a house and stand as a whole. An example, even though Adam, his Ahava, or his love for Eve, exceeded the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, sit there was an act of love. But see, that's why Yahweh, he sent the second Adam, did he not? Yeah. Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And he took upon the sins of Eve, the sins of the house of Israel, upon his body. But yet he did not sin. He stayed the course, even unto the cross. Yeah. Yeah. And Eve, and I speak unto the house of Israel, as being Eve, even though we have sinned. As being the second man, Adam, Yahshua HaMashiach, he took all that to the stake. All of it to the stake for us. Why? Because of his Ahava. Because of his Ahava. So he showed a greater Ahava to us as a house today than Adam even showed to Eve in the beginning, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was willing to take the brunt of the judgment. He took the brunt of the judgment upon his back. Even to the point that even Almighty Yahweh, he turned his face from his beloved son. Hallelujah. But yet, even in that offering, he was well pleased. Why? Because it secured our place with him, Israel, in the Shemayim. That's the love of Almighty Yahweh. That, that, that's what I call love right there. Hallelujah. Let us move on to Yachahanan, chapter 13, verse 1. Hallelujah. And I'm going to basically move through this whole chapter. we got time today. This is Yahweh's day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should be in his house enjoying his love. This is his love, Yisrael. Yeah. Don't get tired of his love now. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is what keeps us alive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. John chapter 13, verse 1. This is the time of Passover. Hallelujah. Now before the, pe the feast of Passover, when Yahshua knew his hour was come. See, he understood that his hour was come, Israel. That he would be this offering or this Passover for Israel. That he should depart out of this world back to the Abba. Having, what does it say? Love. Love what? His own. He loved his own. He loved those which was given to him. And he did not lose any one of them, Yisrael, except the son of Pardish, the one that rose up, Yisrael, or shall rise up. So he loved his own, which were in the world. Are we not in the world, Yisrael? Do we think Yahweh or Yahshua HaMashiach doesn't love us now that he's not here? That he's not here? He's here, Yisrael. Yeah. He's here. Yeah. He's here with us. His Torah, his Mishpah, yeah. the presence of Almighty Yahweh, his judgments in the house of Yisrael. Having loved his own that were in the world, he loved them to what? Yeah. The end. Love loves. Ahava is Ahava to the end, Yisrael. Yeah. To the end of all things. Do we all have a one, a, a one another to the end? Or do we, we give up a little bit there, here and there in the middle of all things? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yahshua sure didn't do it. The rebuke, the reproof. You know, I thought about that. Even when he entered into the Bayat, and there were the soothsayers there, that were selling things in the Bayat of Almighty Yahweh, yet his anger rose up. Why? Because this house is supposed to be a house of Pilah. So his anger rose up. Why did his anger raise up? Why did it rise? Why did he take a scourge and whip the lenders out of the house of Yisrael? It was his love for the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. If we love the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, we will purge out this house, Yisrael. We will purge out those soothsaying things, the things that try to smooth things over so it's applicable to us. Kind of take off the edges a little bit. 
selling things, selling the birthright, selling the Ahab of Almighty Yahweh, selling his Torah instead of buying of it, Yisrael. So even as Yahshua went in and cleaned out the buyer of Yah because of his Ahava, he seen what was taking place, we should take that same vengeance even upon ourselves, Yisrael. A vengeance. To go in and just tear everything down. When you remember, the best way to remodel a home and to get it right, especially an older home, you got to get everything out of it. They have laws, they have statutes, and they continuously add to the books every couple of years laws and statutes. And those laws and statutes keep you under a type of a bondage in a way. Yet they say it's for the better good. But you have to go in, you have to tear out things if you don't want to tear out. You got to tear the walls out. Man, those walls look good. I don't want to tear them walls out. That's a lot of work. The insulation at R12, that's obsolete. You, you got to put some thicker stuff in there now. So you have to go in there, tear those walls down, tear off that pretty sheetrock. You go into a home, usually when you go into a home, it's not, you don't want to go in there and mess things up if it's nice. If anything, you want to go in there and perfect it a little bit. That's what the Torah of Yahweh does, Yisrael, and his bayit. Had to go in and tear those walls out. Had to pull that insulation out. Pull that padding out because it's not thick enough. Sometimes you got to tear the floor up. You go walking across the floor, it's creaking. There's a weak spot right there. Yahweh don't want any weak spots in this house. So you got to tear the floor out. Man, I don't want to tear that floor out. You got to tear the floor out. Had to experience that. How we Zakay? <laughs> We have to get it right. And one sure thing, when it's right, it's right. You're not going to have to go back. At the end of all things, Israel, you always not going to have to go back correcting anything. It's going to all be right. Hallelujah. Let us abide in his Ahava. Hallelujah. Moving on, moving on. Verse 2. And the supper being ended, the devil, the devil Satan, having now put into the heart of Yehudim Hiscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Did he love Yahshua HaMashiach? Did Simon Hiscariot, did he love Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael? Did he love him? Let me read on. Verse 3. Yahshua, knowing that the Abba had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from Yahweh, and he he went to Yahweh. Verse 4. He rises from the supper and said, and lay aside his garments and took a towel and girdled himself. After that, he poured his water into a basin and began to wash his disciplined one, his disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girdled. That shows a lahava and a humility, Israel. The Yahshua, the Torah, the Mitzvah, he stooped low for us to wash our feet. You're getting a foot washing here this morning, whether you realize it or not. He has his towel girdled about his loins, Yisrael, to bring forth to us truth today. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Then he comes to Simon Kepha. And Kepha says to him, Yahshua, do you wash my feet? And Yahshua answered and said to him, what I do, you know not now, but you will, but you shall for now afterwards. Kephar says to him, you shall never wash my feet. Can you imagine, that? Can you imagine yourself saying, saying to Yahshua, no, you're not going to wash my feet. No, you're not gonna, I don't want you to cleanse me. I don't want you to purge me. Don't wash my feet. Yahshua answered him. If I wash not you, you have no part with me. If we don't allow the Torah, the Mishpah, to wash us, Yisrael, we have no part with Yahweh. Yeah. We have no partaking of the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. So allow the Torah, the Mishpah, to wash us today. Hallelujah. Even after he said afterwards, Kephah, wash my feet, my hands, my hair, my whole body. Wash us, Yah, with the Torah. Simon Kephah says to him, Yahshua, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Don't we need our hands and our head washed, Israel? Hallelujah. 
the thoughts that sometimes come into our minds, those things have to be washed out, Israel. So allow the Torah of Yahweh to wash us this day. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And Yahshua said to him, He that is washed needs, needs not save to wash his feet, but is clean everywhere with. And you are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, you are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken up his garment and went and sat down again, he said to them, know you what I have done to you. Do we understand what Yahweh, what Yahshua is doing to us in this time, even at this present moment, Israel, y'all? You call me master and sovereign, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your sovereign, and I'm your master, and I have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Isn't that something, Israel? Yeah. We should wash one another's feet. Wash one another's feet. Uphold one another. Speak truth to our neighbor. That's how you uphold one another. That's how you wash one another's feet. You don't lie one to another. You don't say things deceitfully. You say things in truth and honesty. That's how you wash one another's feet. Did not Yahshua speak a true saying unto them? Hallelujah. Verse 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, the servant is not greater than his master. Neither is he that is sent greater than he that has sent him. Regarding Almighty Yahweh sending him, hallelujah, into the old lamb. He said, if you know these things, what does it say? Happy. happy. Are we happy today? Hallelujah. Knowing these things, Israel. Hallelujah. Knowing that we should... Provide truth one unto another, not in lies if she wash one another's feet. Are we happy knowing that, Israel? Happy are you if you what? Do them. Do them. So we must do it, Israel. Ahava does. Ahava is an action. If you ahava one another, then you will give truth one another. You will wash one another's feet. You will help one another. You will do for one another. You will instruct, you will, you will strengthen one another, Israel. That's what Yahshua was doing. Hallelujah. And we should do as Yahshua did, for he is our example. Verse 17. Again, if you know these things, then happy are you if you do them. Are we happy doing this amongst ourselves, Israel? Are we washing one another's feet? Are we doing this act that Yahshua he says that a servant's not higher than the master. Is that not what he said? But yet he kneeled down and washed the feet, hallelujah, of his disciplined ones. He said, I speak not of you all. In verse 18, I know in whom I have chosen. Yahweh know who is chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Don't we eat bread one with another, Israel? Yeah? Even as we abide here at the Bayad of Almighty Yahweh, we, we're eating bread from the Shemayans. We sit down in the dining hall one with another and we eat bread. Verse 19. Now I tell you before I come that when it has come to pass that you might believe that I am he. I am who? I am he that has been sent from the above. Truly, truly, I say to you, he that, re he that receives whomsoever I send, he receives me. And he that receives me receives him that has sent me. When Yahshua had thus said, he was troubled within his ruach and testified and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the, dis the disciples looked one unto another, doubting of whom he spoke. Now there was, there was 
leaning on Yahshua's bosom, one of the disciples whom Yahshua loved. Yahshua did love him. He loved every last one of them, Israel. And then lying on Yahshua's breast, says to him, Sovereign, who is it? Yahweh answered, Yahshua answered, Here it is, as whom I shall give a sop. And when I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Yahuda Discarit, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan, he entered in to him. Do we allow Satan to enter into us, Yisrael Yah, when we partake of the sop, of the message of Yahshua HaMashiach, when it is a um, displeasing thing to us, when it comes to us, Yisrael Yah, verse 28, verse 27, after the sop, Satan entered into him and said, Yahshua to him, that you, that you do, do it quickly. Yahshua said to him, what you do, do quickly. 28. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spoke this to him. For, for some of them thought because Yahuda had the bag that Yahshua had said to him, by these things that we have need against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Verse 30. He then, having received the sop, he went immediately, and it was night. Verse 31. Therefore, when he was going out, Yahshua said, Now is the Son of Man magnified and honored, and Yahweh is magnified and honored in him. So in this act, now the Son is being magnified. magnified. Why? Because the scripture has been fulfilled, Israel, that one should rise up against and portray him. Verse 32. If Yahweh be magnified and honored in him, Yahweh shall also magnify and honor him in himself, and shall straightway magnify and honor him. Verse 33. Little children, he calls us little children, Israel. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me, and I, and as I said to the Yahudim, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you are Hava, that you love one another. Did not Yahshua love the disciples, Israel, the disciplined ones? But yet, it troubled him. Why? Because he knew he had to speak the truth. He had to speak what Yahweh had commanded him, Israel. It was important that he spoke that, that the scripture may be fulfilled. And that Simon would be the one to, um, to portray him. Verse 34 again. And a new commandment I give to you, that you ahava one another. Did he ahava them, Israel? Did he give them truth? Yeah. As I have loved or ahava you, that you also should ahava, that you love one another. He says this, by this, by the ahava you have one another, all men, ko, all men, there should be a sign to the house of Israel, or to the house. All men, shall know that you are my disciples or my disciplined ones if you have one love one unto another. Do we have this love one unto another, Israel, that despite, despite the hurt or maybe the agony, agony it takes to speak truth one unto another, that we speak it regardless? Hallelujah. That we don't withhold anything. Truth is tough, Israel, whether it hurts or whether it's to heal. Even in her, it heals Israel. But it's important that we give truth, just as Yahshua HaMashiach give truth one or to another. That we have that type of ahava, that we don't hold back Israel. I don't want my op to hold back on me. 
They see me doing something or even perceive me doing something, and they confront me. And I believe that they will, and that they, and they do, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We do it all the time, do we not? Uh, all the time. Hallelujah. You, I hope you do the same thing one unto another. Submit yourselves one unto another. Hallelujah. Wash one another's feet. Verse 36. Simon Kepha said to him, Rabbi, where go you? Yahshua answered him, where I go? You cannot follow me now. He said, now you cannot follow me, but it shall be appointed time. But you shall follow me afterwards. Kepha said to him, Yahshua, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Have we said that, Israel? Have we said we laid out our lives for Yahshua? We give, we give it all unto him. Why? Because we said that we are a heart for him, do we not? He has tried us. Have we not been tried to show what really lies in our hearts? Hallelujah. To show the true integrity of the love that we have towards Yahshua HaMashiach. Let's move on to verse 38. Yahshua answered him, Will you lay down your life for my sake? You know, that's, that, that caused some back searching. I mean, you tell your, your wife or your whole or even your op that you'll hover them much, that you love them, then they come, come back with a question, do you really? Do you really? That's what Yahshua is saying. Verse 38 again, Yahshua answered him, Will you lay down your life for my sake? Truly, truly, I say to you, the cock shall crow till you have denied me thrice. We've had that, haven't we not, Israel? Yeah. Say to your uncle, to your hope, to your wife, to your husband, I love you. And then you'll find yourself in the midst being tried. You hear that cock crowing in the background, Israel. Hallelujah. Let us move on to Yachahanan, chapter 15, verse 1. Let us have one another, Israel. That's really all this message is about. And if we walk in the midst of Almighty Yahweh, in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, as we should, loving him with all, it won't be hard to love one another, Israel. It will not even be hard to love that ark that you don't even know, that you have not seen, that you can pray Give Pala for him, and Yahweh will hear it. The Torah tells us that the prayer of the Siddiq, the earnest prayer of one that is Siddiq, it availeth much. Why does it avail much? Because it is prayed with the Hava to all the house of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yokohanan, chapter 15, verse 1. Yeshua says that I am the true vine. Is he not the true vine? Yeah. Hallelujah. Is he not legit, the real thing? Yeah. As they said, no, no fakeism, nothing fake, the real deal. Yeah. I am the true vine. And my Abba, he is the husband man. He says, every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. That's love, Israel. That's love. Whether you realize that or not, why? Because it lines up with the Mishpah. It lines up with the Torah. He said, every branch in me that bears forth not fruit, I purge it off. Don't you know it's important, even on fruit trees, that you, bear off, that you cut off the dead branches? Why? Because the dead branches, they allow blight. They allow um, disease in. Why? Because it's dead. What happens when an animal dies? It decays. All kind of things enter into the body. It's the same way with plants. So even the Ahab of Almighty Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, even those things that are on the vine that do not grow, he has to cut those things off. He has to cut those things out of our lives, Yisrael Yah. There has to be a separation for those dead things. Hallelujah. Did not, did not I read the last time I was up here concerning the strange children? Those are dead things in our lives, Israel. We need to cut off those things. We need to discard those things. Why? That the vine may produce even more, that it become even more fruitful, and that it not become diseased, Israel. Israel. Hallelujah. That's important. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes it away. Every branch that bears fruit, 
He purges it. He nourishes it. He prunes it. He even put the, the pesticides on it to make sure that there's nothing that can infiltrate or attack the vine or this branch. He purges it that it may bring forth what? More fruit. Don't we want more fruit, Israel? We bear forth fruit, but we want more fruit. We, we, we don't have enough. We're not ready for Yahshua HaMashiach to come. When he comes, he's coming for what? Much. An abundance. Much fruit. Don't you desire to have that much fruit, that abundance, Yisrael? Be honest with yourself, you look at your life, there's, there's not much fruit there, Yisrael. But we have to allow the Ahava of Yahweh to cut. We have to allow the Ahava of Yahweh to prune. Cut off those dead things. Separate us, those dead things, from the life of the high of Almighty Yahweh that is within us. Why? Then we can produce the fruit that he wants, Yisrael. He desires much fruit. You don't want to go to a tree that you've been working on for years and you invested so much in that tree, watching over that tree, and you only get one fruit off that tree. That's a disappointment. No matter how beautiful the fruit is, you want much for your labor. You want three or four, twelve fold what you put in that thing. Hallelujah. Even so much so that you have enough you can give to someone else. That's what Yahweh wants, Israel. Yeah. Verse 3. He says, Now you are clean through the word, through the Torah, through the Mitzvah, which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4. Abide in me. Abide in me. He says, Israel, Stay in me, and I in you. Don't you know if we abide? And Almighty Yahweh, the Torah, the Mishvah, and Yahshua HaMashiach, that he abides in us. That, that's kind of a, a strange saying. If I, It doesn't make sense, does it? But yet it makes sense. As long as we walk in the Torah of Yahweh, and you will continue in the Torah of Yahweh. Why? Because the Torah of Yahweh is in you, Yisrael. Yeah. So if you walk in him, he walks in you, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. So we find our lives not bearing forth the fruit that Yahweh desired. It's because we have detached or separated ourselves from the vine. The branch has separated itself, Yisrael. He said, no more can you, except you, abide in me. Why would we want to abide in the Hava? You know, it's all the Hava. All this is love, Yisrael. Isn't Yahweh love? Doesn't he speak to us? Have we talked about the voice of Yahweh? The call of Yahweh? That's his voice, his essence, his substance. So Yahweh, he's what? He's love. He's love. So if we abide in him, we must abide in his love. Why would we want to abide anywhere else, Israel? Except in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abide in me, and I in him, the same. The same brings forth what? Much fruit. Not some fruit. Not a little bit. Not, a, not enough. But much. Much fruit. For without me. What does it say? Say it again. Say it again. So without Yah. Without his Torah. Without Ahava. We can't do one thing. You can't love one another without a hava. You, you, you can't even face the next day without a hava. If, you, if I didn't have the hava, Yahweh, I don't know how I'd face tomorrow without the Dharma Yahshua. It's all love. It's all hava. It's all hava, Yisrael. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. That's all that branches were. You go out here and you prune these dead branches off the trees. You can't, there's not even good for compost. You throw them in the compost, those diseases and those small things, those parasites, they're going to abide in the compost. You go throw the compost out, you infect the whole tree. 
So what, how do you dispose of them? You must burn them. You must burn them. That's why Yahweh, he's going to cleanse, and he's cleansing his house. He's separating those branches that are not bearing fruit, those diseased branches. He's throwing them all in a pile, what? For damnation, for the internal fire of hell. That's what the burning is, Israel. That's what the burning is. Hallelujah. So allow Yahweh to separate those things from us, Israel, that is not of him. Purge me, Yahweh. Cleanse me. If you have to, cut me, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Cleanse me from all things that do not please you, that offend you, almighty Yahweh. Verse 7. If you abide in me, and my misfire, my Torah, my words abide in you. Do the Torah misfire abide, abide in our lives, Israel? Has he not written it there? Hallelujah. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. It shall be done. What kind of things are we asking of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael Yah? You know, if you ask according to his will, how do you know his will? Because we abide in the Ahava. We abide in the Torah. So whatever we ask in the Ahava of Almighty Yahweh, in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, he'll give it to us. There's some beautiful things in this Torah, Yisrael Yah. There's some marvelous things in this Torah. All you got to do is ask. He, he, he won't keep it from you. He give it, he'll give it to you. We must abide in him, Israel. We must walk in his Mishpah. We must walk in his Torah. Verse 8. Herein is my Abba magnified and he is honored, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples or my Talmudim, my, my disciplined ones. As Abba has loved me, have the Abba loved Yahshua HaMashiach? It's not Yahshua, simply the Torah, made flesh, Yisra'ya. As your body has loved me, so have I loved you. My, we don't think about that sometimes when we read the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh, that he loves us. Seeing the judgment, the agonies, the pains, the things that Yisra'ya has suffered through time. But you know why? Because Yahweh loves us. Those sufferings at those times when we read in Torah was all because of our sins. Any avat with his child transgress, the, the father's going to reprove him. Especially after chance after chance, and Yahweh continue to give us chance after chance after chance, Yisrael. So what does he do? He laid a rod to us. Hallelujah. He puts it on our backsides. He intends for us to feel it, Yisrael. Why? Because he harvests us. He harvests us. Hallelujah. Verse 9, as Abba has loved me, so I have, I, have I loved you. And he said, continue you in my love. Continue in my hava. Continue in the mishvah, hakodesh of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Abba's commandments. Could, could, could Yahshua stay in the love if he did not abide by the commandments of Almighty Yahweh? There's no way. He wouldn't have went to the stake. He wouldn't have had the harbor for us if he didn't have the harbor for Almighty Yahweh. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Abba's commandment, and I have abided in his love. So simply put, we abide in the commandments of Almighty Yahweh, we abide in his Ahava. And in doing that, we're able to what? To love, to have one another. As the Torah, as the scripture has commanded us, Yisra'ya. Verse 12. This is my commandment. Did I skip verse 11? Let me go back to verse 11. These things have I spoken to you, that my joy. How many of you want the joy? Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. How many of you want that joy? It, I want the joy of you. Hallelujah. I want that joy. Give me that joy. These things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy, what is our joy? It's abiding in the hive of Yah. That's our joy. And that even our joy, abiding in the Torah, abiding in the midst of may be fulfilled. 
You don't tell you, you mean to tell me you don't think Yahweh looks over us just right, y'all? I mean, you stand at Torah, you're not going to be moved. You're not going to be shaken, Yisrael. Because we abide in him, he's going to abide in us. And then the more we see, the more he's going to give us to see. The more we understand, the more we seek, the more he's going to give us to understand, Yisrael. Why? That our joy, that our understanding, that our fulfillment, even in this short time, we may be fulfilled. Why? That we live our lives unto Almighty Yahweh. But we're just a living offering. That's all we are. We're just a living offering unto Almighty Yah. Verse 12. This is my commandment. This is my mishpah, my commandment. I have given this to you to obey, Yisrael. This is my commandment, that you are hava, that you love one another, one another, as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his high, lay down his life for his friends. You mean to tell me Yahshua, the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh considers us to be friends? That he laid down his life for us? He laid down his essence for us? He laid down his love for us? Love will make you give it up, Yisrael. Love will make you lay down your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love will make you do things that you normally wouldn't do without it. Hallelujah. You would give up your life. I'll give up my life for my art. Yes, I would. Hallelujah. What, what else is there to live for but to live for the Torah and the Mishra of Yah? Hallelujah. Y'all sure gave up his life for us, Israel. Yah. Why don't we just give up his, our lives for him today? Just give it all unto him. Give it all to him. Give him all the trials. Give him all the troubles. Give him all the doubts. Just give it, give it to him. Hallelujah. He knows what to do with it, Israel. Yah. Verse 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants. My, I just want to be a servant. Let me just be a servant. I'll be happy just, just serving Yah. Just serving Yah, sure. But he said... Henceforth, I call you not servants, for a servant know not what his master does. But I call you friends. My, he calls me a friend. Who wants to be a friend of Yahshua today? Hallelujah. I wouldn't mind just being a servant. But a friend? It, 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 you know, it takes love. A friend has to have real love. A friend, a friend love you to the end. Did, did I not read that? To the end of all things, Yahshua said he'd be with us. Man, that's a friend. Many times, even in our minds, we leave Yah. In our thoughts, we leave Yah. But we're always in his mind. We're always in his thoughts. He calls us friend. That's love, Yisrael. Yah. I want to have that kind of love, Yisrael. Yah. That, uh, Welfare and the well-being of you all, those of you who are listening, those of you hearing, by via live stream, that my concern is your welfare. That I do what it takes. Hallelujah. There's not too many that want to do that wants to do what it takes, Israel. Torah talks about there's not even many men that would give their lives for even a righteous man, and not all for a wicked man. Hallelujah. But I want to be able to give my life for Israel. Hallelujah. Just as Yahshua HaMashiach gave his life. I'm bringing this to a close soon, Israel. Hallelujah. I pray this message has been an inspiration to your left. Yeah. That we throw away this little cuddly thing that we think is love. It's more than just you speaking it, Israel. Or you giving something to somebody. You can give all, something to somebody all day. It's in the life that you live. If it's you being a strength to your ark and a, a hope, that shows your love, that you abide in the Torah. If you want, I'm weak, I can look over there, whether it's an ark or a hope, and say, man, they're still hanging in there. They're walking in the Torah. You know, I, what excuse do I have? Hallelujah. But to be an example and a strength to them also. He said, you are my friends in verse 14. If you do whatever... I command you. Verse 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for a servant know not what a master does, but I have called you friends for all.
These things I have heard of my Abba, I have made them known unto you. Did he lie? Did Yahshua lie? He told us everything there is to know, Israel. Hallelujah. All that the Abba has commanded, have given him, have told him, his, he hasn't kept it from us. Hallelujah. Verse 16. He says, you have not chosen me. Well, we have chosen Yahshua. Knowing, knowing, not knowing what we knew, know now, conditions. We, we, we wouldn't have chose him. So you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Every one of us here has been chosen by Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's not too many people you even pick to be your friend. Is it not true, Yisrael Yah? But Yahweh, Yahshua, how much he consider us that he says, my friend, as long as we abide in his Torah. But I've chosen you, and not only that, I ordain you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of my Abba in my name, he will give it unto you. These things have I commanded you that you ahava one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before. It has hated you, Yisrael. If you, are, if you were of the world, then the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world, it hates you. Remember the words that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than the master. If they have, pers if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do to you for my name's sake, because they know not him that has sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they had not known sin. But now I have no cloak for their sin. I have come, I have spoken unto them the truth, the Torah. Now they have no cloak. They are but naked. He that hates me hates my Abba also. And if, and I, if I had not done among them the works which no other man had did, they had not sinned. But now I have, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my Abba. They did not love the works of Yahshua, the testimony of Yahshua, those that did not abide in the Torah. So because they hated, first of all, Almighty Yahweh, they hated Yahshua HaMashiach. So we should not even expect the world to love us with what they call love, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Verse 25. But, but this comes to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, that is written in the Torah. They hate me without a cause. Verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send to you from the Abba, even the Ruach of Truth. Do we have this comfort, Yisrael? This Ruach of Truth, which proceeds from the Abba, he shall testify of me. And you also shall bear the witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. From the beginning? We have been with him from the beginning. Let you know our names are written in the book of High. Do we think the book of High was just written in Yahshua's time or just yesterday? It was written from the beginning of all things. So we have been in his love, we have been in his mind, and we have been in his heart. That's love, Israel. I don't know no other way to put it. If you love your ark and your hope, they would be in your heart, they would be in your mind, Israel. All that you would do would be to strengthen the house. Hallelujah. All that you do, Israel. Hallelujah. I, have, I do have a few more pages, but I'm going to bring this to an end, Israel. It's a beautiful day. I want us to enjoy it and rest. Hallelujah. And the reassurance of the Hava. Hallelujah. Do you love one another? Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I want to finish this out in Yakahana on chapter 3. Chapter 3, 1 through 16. I'm going to finish this up quickly, Israel. 
Hallelujah. It says, uh, First Yachanan, I'm sorry. First Yachanan, chapter 3, verse 1. We all know this scripture. We, we, we sing it. Hallelujah. Behold what manner of love Ahava the Abba has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the children of Almighty Yahweh. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the children of Yahweh. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, that we shall be like him. I want to be like him, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be as he is when, we, when I see him. For we shall see him as he is. Verse 3. And every man that has this hope. Do we have this hope, Israel? And to every man that has this hope in him, what does he do? He purifies himself. Love purifies. Love is a fire. A fire purifies Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even as he is pure. Whosoever commits sin also commits iniquity. For sin is the transgression of the Torah. It's the transgression of the love of Yah. Hallelujah. Why would we want to abide out of the love of Almighty Yahweh Israel? Out of his Mishra, out of his Torah. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whoever so abides in him, they sin not, Yisrael. Did he lie? Did he lie, Yisrael? So we must abide in Almighty Yahweh that we what? That we sin not. Whosoever sin has not seen him, neither has known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. Not even a hidden man of our own hearts, Israel. Many times it's ourselves that deceive us. We want to blame it on the devil, on the Satan, but it's ourselves, Israel. He that does Sadiq does righteous is right, even as he is righteous. He that committed sins is of Satan, for Satan he sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of Yahweh was made manifest. That was the purpose of the Son. Of, Yah of Yahweh, Yahshua, be made manifest to us, Israel. That he destroy, that he may destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of Yahweh does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. The seed of Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, remains in us, Israel. His Mishpah, his Torah. He cannot sin because he is born of Almighty Yahweh. In this, the children of Yahweh, they are manifest. And then children, also the children of Satan. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of Yahweh. Neither does he love his brother. Do you hear that, Israel? I'm going to read that again. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of Almighty Yahweh. We know that. We understand that. But listen, neither does he love his brother. If you don't love your your op, your hope, your fellow man, Israel, you're not of your mighty Yahweh. Don't tell me you love me and you don't love the Torah. Hallelujah. If you don't love the Torah, you don't love me. It's just that simple and plain, Israel. Verse 11. But this is the message that you have heard from the beginning. Did we not hear that from the beginning? From the bare shed of all things, that message, the Ahava of Yahweh, did not he speak? Was that not his call? His Ahava from the beginning, even the message? That we should Ahava one another. We should be as one, Israel. We should Ahava one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, was of Satan, and he murdered his brother, and wherefore he murdered he him. What does it say? Because his own works, they were evil. And what? His brothers were righteous. His brothers were righteous. Verse 13. He said, marvel not, my brother, my ark. If the world hates you, you can expect the world's going to hate us, Israel. Why? Because we love Yah. 
The love of Yahweh has been spread upon us. They don't have that love that Yahweh has, Israel. Verse 14. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love what? The brother, the ah, the hope, the family of Israel. He that loves not his brother, he abides in death. He lives in death. He lives in darkness. He lives without the understanding of Yahweh, without the love of Yahweh. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that a murderer has not eternal life abiding in him. And my last verse is right, y'all. Hereby know we the love of Yahshua, Hamashiach. How do we know the love of Yahshua, Hamashiach? We all know why. We all know why. Because he laid down his life for us. Hallelujah. That's his love. He laid down his essence, his life for us, Israel. So what should we do as a people? We are to lay down our lives for our, our, for our brethren. Hallelujah. You know, you lay down your life for your ark for your hope. You're laying down your life for Yahshua HaMashiach. You're denying yourself for certain privileges, certain things, for your art, for your hope. You're showing that you love Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So let us, yeah, let us, Yisrael, yeah, let, us, let us abide in the Torah and the Mitzvah and the love of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. See this beautiful day he's given us, Yisrael, yeah, the sun's out. I know I say often, even, even when it's raining, it's just a beautiful day. But it's a beautiful day. Hallelujah. And it's even more beautiful to know that we are loved. Hallelujah. By Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Hallelujah. 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 Let's Yahweh. Let us turn to Yerushalayim. Lift our hands to Almighty Yah. Almighty Yahweh, we do barak you for this day, another day that you have made, Yah. Another day in which your Ahava, your mercies, have been made anew. And it's been made afresh for you, Israel, Yah. Hallelujah. Why? Because you Ahava us, Yahweh. Oh, we desire, Yah, as a house to Ahava you, Abba Yahweh. All that is within us, Yah, all that we have, our substance, our being, Yah, we give it unto you. As a living offering, Yah, unto you, Yahweh, because you have given Yahshua, your word, your Torah, the essence of your life for us, that we may be redeemed in the end, Abba Yahweh. So we give unto you the offering of praises, of Todah, of honor, Yahweh, oblations, Yahweh, unto you, Abba Yahweh. Hallelujah. We do barak you for all things. We ask that you would touch all those that are ailing in their bodies, Abba Yah. We send out Pilar, a prayer of earnest, Yahweh, that you will heal them, that you will restore them, Yahweh, that you will strengthen, Yahweh, even their imuda, the resilience, Yahweh, their faith in your Torah and in your Mishpah, Yahweh. And touch those also, Yahweh, in their bodies that are weak, that are sick, that are ailing, Abba Yahweh. Allow your Rafah, the bomb of Gilead, Yahweh, to be poured out upon the house of Israel on this day. We do ask that your medicine will be a counting around all Israel, Yah, and that you will go with them, Yahweh, those that are listening, those that have traveled from near and afar. Be with them as a hedge, Yah, your Torah, as it was about you. In all things, we do barak you. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Yahweh barak, Kol Yisrael, Yah, Yahweh barak, hallelujah.